Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Robert, there's a church in Gainesville, Florida that says it's going to go ahead and burn copies of the Quran to mark the 9-11 anniversary. Is the White House, is there anything the White House is doing to discourage that or prevent them from going ahead with that? Well, look, I, I think the best uh, place to uh, look for the views of uh, this administration uh, would be to look at, the, look at what uh, General Petraeus said over the weekend. Uh, we, we know that the, that type of activity, uh, we know that that type of activity is being transmitted back to uh, places like Afghanistan, where uh, General Petraeus obviously is our lead commander. Uh, as he said, it puts our troops in harm's way. Uh, and obviously that uh, any, any type of activity like that would be, uh, that puts our troops in harm's way would be a concern to this administration. Is there any thought from anyone at the White House to reach out to the pastor of the church? To, to I have not heard of any. Are you ready to say what the president is going to do Saturday to mark the 9-11 anniversary? The president will attend uh, a memorial service at the Pentagon. Uh, I believe the vice president uh, uh, will, uh, will go to New York, and obviously the first lady and former first lady Laura Bush are in Pennsylvania. I don't have the times. Uh, uh, on the event at the Pentagon with me. Yes, ma'am. The economic package that you're rolling out, what is the president's legislative strategy for that? Is this something he thinks can be passed before Election Day? And also, is he seeking passage of these measures as one big package or separate measures? I, I, on the second one, I, I don't know the answer to uh, uh, one package or several packages. Look, uh, I, I think what the president the president will, will tomorrow uh, outline a series of the proposals, uh, many of which uh, you all have read about and reported on uh, over the past several days, that he believes uh, continue our strategy to getting our economy moving again, and uh, uh, more importantly, for long-term economic growth. Um, look, I, I don't think we're under, we understand what, what season we've entered in Washington. We know that Congress won't be here for a lot of time. We certainly hope that there are measures, including some of the ones that the President will outline, that, that Congress will consider. Uh, if they don't do that prior to the election, the, the President and the economic team still believe that these represent uh, some very important ideas in continuing along our path toward economic recovery. And as I said, most importantly, uh, th this is about, and you, look, you're, you'll hear the President talk about this a lot tomorrow. <laughs> in Cleveland. This is, uh, this is about long-term economic growth. This isn't about the next 60 days or the next 90 days. This is about how do we get our economy fully back on track? How do we get the millions that want to work back to work? Uh, and how do we repair the economic damage that's been going on, not just over the past two years, but over the past 10 years? We didn't get into this overnight, as I've said uh, countless times. Um, but I think one of the things the President will do tomorrow is we'll go through the notion of, you know, for 10 years we saw rules written uh, for the special interests. We saw uh, a, a blind eye turn to uh, some of their activities. We saw wages decrease. We saw uh, families rightly more concerned about uh, the future of their children and uh, whether or not the economy that they were going to raise their children in was going to be uh, one that was capable of passing on the American dream to each and every one of their children. Are you likely to get an announcement this week on either the consumer agency job or CEA? You know, I have not gotten uh, white smoke on that except to say, um, I, I, obviously nothing, nothing that I know of today. Uh, I can't rule out that at some point that may come during the week. Yes, sir. Uh, your former budget director, uh, Mr. Orzag, wrote in the New York Times today that uh, the administration and Democrats should compromise for, with the Republicans in Congress and extend all of the Bush tax cuts for two years and then get rid of them. One of the reasons for that, he said, uh, in terms of keeping the tax cuts in place is, quote, Higher taxes now would crimp consumer spending, further depressing the already inadequate demand for what firms are capable of producing at full tilt. So your OMB director is saying that if you guys go ahead with what you're proposing, which is 
uh, allowing them to expire Jim, on the bridges. That, I think Peter was would, mostly, if I if I read the article correctly, I think Peter was mostly discussing the permanence of and the extension of those that involve the middle class. I'm, but I'm specifically talking about this one. Yes, well, I understand, I'm, you're, you're, I understand you're, you're what you're reading on the, on, the, on, the, on the middle yeah, class part. I, I think, in all honesty, in reading the article, I think Peter had a congressional relations hat on in terms of what political price Congress might have to go through to extend different things. That's not the viewpoint that the president holds. Mm -hmm. um, the Do president. You disagree that higher taxes, in terms of the push tax cuts expiring, would uh, crimp consumer spending? You disagree with that? I, I think that if you make $250,000 a year in this economy, you're probably not putting off the purchase of a big screen TV. I, I just, I, I don't think your consumer demand is if you make a quarter of a million dollars or $400,000 a year in this economy, I don't think you're putting off the purchase of uh, a new suit or a new car because you make $400,000 a year. Uh, if you make $40,000 a year, I think you're putting off a lot of purchases uh, based on the fact that you don't have it and that impacts consumer demand. So you disagree with Peter? I, again, I, I don't, I, I don't, I, the way I read the article, Jake, is that Peter's not making that argument about the high-end tax cuts. That he's making that ar that argument about the middle class tax cuts, which the president certainly agrees that not extending them uh, will certainly have an impact. We, the president, will argue tomorrow that we should extend those uh, uh, extend those middle class tax cuts. Is uh, in not doing so uh, would most assuredly hurt our economy. Uh, but again, I, I think if you're making 250000 or 400000 or 600000 or $800,000 in this economy, you're not putting off the purchase of, it, there's not a great crush on or, or pull back in your consumer demand. That's the, the, this economy is not hurting people that make $800,000 a year. It's hurting families that are making $40,000 a year. If, if I could do a follow-up, uh, the, uh, there's a lot of polling out in, uh, today, including ABC News Washington Post poll that indicates um, more Americans feeling negatively about the president and his job performance, especially about the economy. Um, for the first time, uh, numerically, more Americans think that the president's policies have hurt the economy than have helped the economy. Why? I assume you think that they're wrong. Why are they wrong? Well, I, look, I, I, I uh, First and foremost, Jake, obviously, uh, as I've said in here a number of times, there is and continues to be great frustration with where we are in this economy. Uh, among those frustrated is the President of the United States. We've seen a, uh, we've seen a recession unlike virtually anything that anybody has seen in any of their lifetimes. Uh, and it's going to take, as the President will discuss on Wednesday, uh, more than a two-year or less than two-year time period to get out of that hole. Uh, that's why what he'll talk about, he believes, will continue us on uh, on a road to recovery, but that that recovery will certainly take some time. Um, uh, and, and I think in the end, this president and this administration will be graded on, uh, uh, on what happens uh, at the end of this road, not some place in between. I think, I'll be honest with you, I think the American people are not concerned about the President's poll numbers. I think the American people are concerned about whether or not they have a job, how they're going to pay their bills, uh, the future of their children. I think that's what the American people are concerned about, and that's the task that the, uh, the President will spend uh, every day worrying about. Would a plurality think that what the President's doing is making matters worse? Uh, I, I, again, I, I I think by virtually any measure, uh, our economy is in a better place than it was two years ago. Uh, are there, there are, I think, uh, Americans rightly concerned about uh, our debt and our deficit, and the President uh, uh, understands that and uh, has taken steps to introduce a, a, a budget that includes a uh, freeze on non-security discretionary spending. and. Uh, obviously, we'll spend uh, a decent amount of time in the next many months going through the medium and long term, um, uh, the things that we need to do in the medium and long term to get our debt and deficit under control. Yeah, yes, sir. Robert, since you mentioned the jobs picture, I just wanted to ask one more question about Peter Warzak because he said specifically that 
letting all the Bush tax cuts expire will make the job situation worse. You see, quote, no one wants to make an already stagnating jobs market worse over the next year or two, which is exactly what would happen if the cuts expire as planned. Yeah, again, and so, I, my, my, again, my reading of this is that that, you were talking uh, about consumer spending before on jobs. Well, Can Jake you, was talking about consumer spending, and I was responding to that. I, I, again, I, 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 I do not believe. I think if you, if you are looking at, uh, and if you're looking for um, a broad band of economists that will tell you the best way to get the economy moving is to extend those tax cuts, uh, I don't think you'll find them. Uh, you know. When, when, the president, when President Bush signed the 2001 tax cuts into law, I believe it was June of 2001, we were in the midst of a recession. Including the month he signed those tax cuts into law, the economy shed jobs for 15 of the next 16 months. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't I, I, if your argument is that these jobs or these tax cuts spur a great amount of jobs or economic growth, I don't think you'll find an economist or a series of economists, certainly the CBO put together a list of all the things that might be done to get the economy moving again, and I think it was either 10 out of 10 or 12 out of 12. And certainly there's no historical data that, would, that you would point to. Well, you also have a lot of economists saying that if you raise taxes on the rich, they're going to be less likely to hire people. Doesn't that hurt the employment picture? Again, I, I, there two to three percent of small businesses would be affected in this. And most of those, let's understand what those small businesses are. It's a white-collar law firm that meets the technical definition of not a, not a large number of people that are employed, okay? Uh, it, it, it's just, we're not talking about the mom-and-pop uh, hardware store. That's, that's it's just not what we're talking about. Related on the President's economic plan, last week from that podium you basically said there's not going to be a second stimulus plan. Mm -hmm. And then as the details start coming out, and you add it up, the president's already proposing at least $350 billion in new money. That, that's, that's the, the net cost of the expensing is not, is, is 30. It's Congress to agree to the offsets, which is a big No, 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 the net, the net, the, 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 no, that's, you're, you're, you've got the R&E, Research and Experimentation Tax Credit, funded by closing corporate loopholes. The expensing tax, uh, the, the increase in the expensing uh, and the pulling forward of that in 2011 has a net cost uh, over 10 years of $30 billion. Because what you're doing is taking a schedule for investment depreciation that would be written off as part of your taxes instead of over a several year period of time at half, you're pulling all of that investment forward to one year, but that money then isn't written off in each of the successive years that the 10 year budget window is part of. So I think if you look at I think if you were to add up infrastructure, the R and E, and this, uh, it's it's certainly less than two hundred billion dollars. Okay. You add it up, two hundred billion, even if it's two hundred billion dollars, it's a well, it'd be less than big one hundred and eighty. Okay, okay. it's one hundred eighty billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying it's not a lot of money. Okay. So why are you not calling it a stimulus plan? I mean, can well, again, the president I, I, be straight I, with the American people and say, look, the first one, no, no, I, we I, think it saved or created three point three million jobs, but we need a second one. No, no, that's uh, the, uh, and I, I listed a, a series of things that the president had done um, uh, over the course of the last, uh, let's see, what's it out? It's August, September. If you go back to uh, last August, not a month ago, but a year and a month ago, we had cash for clunkers. Uh, we've extended unemployment insurance because for those that were uh, for unemployed regardless of the number of weeks up to 99, you were going to lose your benefits. Uh, we've ensured that states aren't going to lay off teachers and firefighters when we need them most. Uh, the president has taken steps along the way beyond the Recovery Act itself uh, to do things that were necessary to continue to spur our economic recovery, and that's exactly what's being done here. It's not. Yes, sir. Thank you, Robert. Um, the, you said a little while ago that we know what season we've entered in Washington. I assume you meant the political season uh, when not much gets done on Capitol Hill. So right. why then did the president wait until now to introduce these tax cut proposals for businesses well, that Republicans have been calling for for 
not just months, but well, for then, years. Then we ought to be able to get this done pretty quickly. No, because it's the season you just said. It just doesn't get done. Why would the president wait for exactly the point when he knows things don't get through Congress to introduce this? But, Chip, let me just take the premise of your question. If you support, if you, as somebody who's running for Congress, Representing the other parties. Robert, you know very well, you just said. No, no, but, but hold on, I'm just trying this to set. This is the season when things help, don't get done. But just help me understand the logic here. Why would, would, so then would you concede that the logic of it not getting done is simply because of politics? Yeah, and it, okay. well then you would have to concede that the logic of the president introducing it now no, is no, because no. of politics. I, I, well, first of all, I, I don't know that, uh, I don't know who, uh, maybe there are people that have proposed 100% expensing uh, of, uh, uh, I, I don't know that that's the case. The, yeah, yeah, actually, that, it, in right. 2008. In the campaign. The, the, the R&E is... All of this has been proposed by Republicans in one form or another. Uh, well, I, I don't know if the expansion Why would and the... the not have done it earlier this I'm year I'm sure that the permanence year. of R&E, we've been talking about that for years. I'm not sure that the expansion and the simplification uh, of research and experimentation uh, has been talked about. about politics introducing no, it now, isn't it? You it, can't it, possibly it, get it through Congress, and you know that. But, uh, Chip, Congress doesn't, Congress doesn't stop thinking about what it's going to do uh, after November, the president's putting on the table a series of what he believes are important economic ideas. Uh, Why didn't he do it a year ago or six months ago? Well, again, if you look at the expensing provisions, in 2008, the former administration had a 50 percent expensing provision in law. The Recovery Act contained a 50 percent expensing provision in 2009. In 2010, the small business bill that, that is before the Senate continues the 2009's 50 percent expensing uh, threshold. We're saying that for 2011, we believe that 50 should go to 100. It builds off of uh, an effort to get capital off the sidelines and into the economy. Some of this stuff uh, is uh, builds off of what has already been done. So the notion that these are somehow either pulled out of whole cloth uh, for the first time, I, I think is, uh, it's not an accurate reading of, the, of McCain, any of the speaking, policy problems. Speaking of McCain, he says that coming up with it now is just a, a sign that the administration's flailing around looking for anything they can sell as an effort to get the economy moving. This is, well, but I guess in a sense, Chip, I want to separate, we, we, look, we're in the political season, we get that. This is, these are not, this is not simply something that the president is proposing uh, to get us somehow through the next seven weeks of, uh, of, of how we get our economy from where it is to where we want it to be. Uh, the president, as I said a minute ago, is focused on the problems that the American people have, the economic situation that we all find ourselves in. It may or may not overlap well with a political calendar. But that's, again, that's not what the, the president isn't here to solve the nation's problems on a political calendar. He's here to solve the nation's problems as they exist. That's, uh, that's what he's elected to do, and that's what he'll focus uh, his time on doing. And just quickly on the Koran story, have you heard the president comment on that? I, I have not. I have not. Did the president misspeak yesterday when he said the uh, infrastructure improvements uh, would create jobs immediately? About the same time, uh, officials were saying on background it would be 2011 well, and I maybe think, late 2011. Well, I, I think some of that obviously depends on when something would pass. If you pass something in, uh, if you pass something uh, in the next uh, few months, I, I think you could certainly see jobs created for the summer construction season. Yes, or I'm sorry, the spring construction season. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you just told Ed it's not a stimulus package. Does that mean it won't stimulate the economy? No, I, 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 I think there are a series of things that would help put our economy on a stronger road to recovery. Uh, more importantly, uh, Samantha, you could, you could dump whatever you wanted into the economy to get the economy to do certain things in a, in a very short period of time. Uh, none of that though is going to, let's take the infrastructure for instance. The infrastructure is built off of what Congress will ultimately do as part of a six-year transportation reauthorization plan. <coughs> Partly because we know that one out of every five people that's unemployed used to spend time in the construction industry. Back when we had fairly easy loans to buy a house and back when 
uh, millions of units of homes were being built annually. Uh, we now know that because of foreclosure, because of credit, because of the economy, there's uh, a vast surplus in those homes. I mean, these measures are designed to stimulate the economy, they're, they're, correct? They're, they are designed to continue our economic recovery. Um, you've announced pay-fors for some of these proposals, mm -hmm. notably the ones that would be permanent, but not all of them. And I wonder how that runs up against your discretionary spending freeze, how it's consistent with your policy not to spend unless well, it's look, paid for. Well, uh, look, uh, uh, obviously on, uh, I think, uh, on the call that Wendell was talking about, there was a discussion about closing tax cuts for oil and gas companies to pay for an increased amount of infrastructure spending, which would fall, uh, which would certainly fall in the non uh, non-security discretionary spending. I just wonder how you bucket. decide, because some things you, you did identify paid for, others you don't Again, I think some things, uh, some things are designed to, uh, uh, some things are designed uh, as part of, as you said, a, a bucket of uh, otherwise discretionary spending, and some are designed to, uh, for tax incentives, that will take capital and money off the sidelines and put it into the economy. I mean, I, I guess in other words, you're, you're prepared to deficit spend right now, notwithstanding this threat spending. Well, I, 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 there are certainly proposals in here that would uh, uh, that would do that. Yes. Okay, and a quick one on our poll: 58% um, believe that if the Republicans get control, they will have different ideas than the Bush administration. 35% believe they'll fall back on Bush policies. I, it, it stands out because it seems like voters are directly rejecting the very argument that the president has been making. Seems to be rejecting the very months. argument that the Republicans, that had both of the congressional committees made on NBC as well. Uh, I, I think Pete Sessions said very verbatim that uh, we we want to we want to return to those policies. Well, th that may be the case, but it seems voters don't know that. We will spend the next. Uh, couple of months uh, sharpening that argument, if need be, to ensure that people do. Laura? Um, in, his, in the Peter Orzek piece, he also, besides making an economic argument, made a political argument about extending the um, tax cuts for the upper income bracket by saying that that may be the cost of a deal with Republicans. Would you, and, and he says that would be a trade-off worth making. Do you think that would be a trade-off worth making? Uh, the, the President's viewpoint is that uh, we cannot afford to extend the tax cuts for those making more than $250,000 a year. Let's understand what that means. For most of these, most of the spending for extending those tax cuts comes from almost all of it, the bulk of it, comes from incomes that surpass a million dollars. Roughly for a millionaire, that's a $100,000 tax cut. I don't think the president believes that we are uh, a $100,000 tax cut from a millionaire away from uh, an economy that works for families that are making $40,000 a year. So is he ruling out signing legislation that would extend the tax cuts for that group? Again, our viewpoint on this is that, uh, uh, that we should and must pass uh, legislation that extends the tax cuts for middle class families, but we cannot afford uh, in this environment to, um, in our budgetary and fiscal environment, to extend the tax cuts for those that make more than $250,000 a year. So therefore, you're ruling out? Are you ruling out that? I, I, I'm, I'm simply stating what our position is. May I follow up? Why are you so dead set against uh, using the term stimulus, especially for the, uh, the public works component of this series of proposals? Uh, it very much resembles things that were in the Recovery Act. Some, some, of, some of them uh, some of them build off of what was in the Recovery Act. Uh, I, I, I do not think, as I said last week, I do not think that this is uh, anywhere near the level of uh, what, uh, what was enacted uh, at the beginning of the administration. And also, Robert, you said a few minutes ago that um, the President wants to put on the table this series of economic ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you uh, see the prospects for it getting off the table? Time well, look, I, I think if you go back and look at, and as has been pointed out here, these seem to, uh, some of these ideas have some support. Uh, look, at some point, 
we're going to have to stop playing politics and start uh, getting about fixing the economy because that's what's right for the American people. Uh, at some point, uh, uh, at some point, the other party will begin to do that, and uh, we have a series of proposals for them to look at. You talk about Peters you know, putting on a congressional relations hat. <laughs> In terms of White House relations, did he give you guys a heads up at all that he was going to be writing on this subject? Uh, we certainly didn't see Peters' column before uh, before it appeared today. I mean, obviously, I think it was reported late last week that he was going to start writing right, a column. But the substance, the grist of the, yeah. No, but no. Nobody that I'm aware of uh, saw the column before. And just, and I'm sorry to belabor this point, but you just said you know, the president's very, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> deeply, deeply troubled. Um, exactly. The president, I can see the, the pain. The smirk on your face is, uh, is, uh, seems to underscore the tremendous emotional pain with which I'm now putting I'm you through, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm um, glad we can do this together. You want to say extending, <laughs> extending, you just were very clear the president does not believe extending um, tax, it's not affordable to extend tax cuts for those. Uh, but I believe Orzag's point was it's not affordable to extend them for the middle class. That's his point. And if we could get your uh, comments on that. The president disagrees with that. that was, Can you talk that, about it? didn't seem very pained at all. Huh? That was, the president disagrees with his former OMB director that extending the middle class tax cuts are not something that we can afford. Yes. Were these arguments he made when he was budget director? I, I will say this. I, obviously, it was not in every meeting that Peter was in. I did not, uh, uh, I, I did not hear him make this argument. He may have made... Uh, uh, this argument in some meetings. I, I, I certainly don't recall it, but that's not to say that he didn't. All right. Uh, can you talk about what the president discussed this morning with Secretary Clinton and the NATO Secretary General? Uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Clinton meeting is part of their regular uh, weekly meetings. I don't have a readout on that, but we will have a readout on the NATO Secretary General uh, a little bit later on. I, my, my, uh, my guess is that most of that had to do with Afghanistan. And also, to what extent is tomorrow's speech a direct response to Congressman Boehner's speech on the economy in Ohio a couple weeks ago? Well, it's uh, it's certainly uh, it's in the same city, uh, and I think the president will uh, use that opportunity to contrast uh, a vision of returning to uh, a decade of policy and value decisions that got us into this mess, uh, which, if you look back at what Congressman Boehner said in that speech. Uh, he seemed to lay out a, a, a strong predicate for the very same type of decisions that have been made uh, over the past 10 years that got us into this mess. I, uh, I anticipate the president will spend a decent amount of time discussing it. And the venue of community college versus the city club? Uh, I, that, I, I mean, look, I, I, I think it's, uh, uh, in this case, uh, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland and Cleveland. Did you yes, choose Cleveland because Boehner had given his speech there? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to put you through the same emotional racking that I just put Hans through, so I just figured yes was probably an easier answer. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, can I ask about the Oval Office rug and the quotation that you folks attributed to Martin Luther King? Um, I don't think. Well, just to be fair, I don't. I, I don't. I, I think he said. I, I was, <laughs> was going to say, I, let's uh, just, sti let's, well, I think we should stipulate for history that it was not us that thought he said it. It was many people that believed, I think rightly so, that he and said it. Yes. He, he did say it on more than one occasion. Just, it has been yes. pointed out that, uh, that Dr. King himself often pointed to the fact that these were the words of uh, Dr. Theodore Parker, an abolitionist. Is Parker, was the president aware of, of these? Uh, I, I have not. Uh, Mark, I have, uh, we have not covered the rug today in our discussions. I would say this. Uh, I read some of the back and forth on this. I read the column in the Post, which, uh, you know, I, I, we certainly all uh, learn a lot uh, of important history on. Again, I'd point out that I think what, uh, what King said and what uh, Parker said are not the same thing. Uh, what's on the rug is what, uh, what Dr. King had said. The president of the White House not believe that Parker should get some credit for Well, I, nobody gets credit on the rug. I mean, there's, I, I, I mean, the, it's just the quotes. I don't, and Mark, I have to say, if I see you in there riding on the rug, you're going to be in line. <laughs> I, I want to get that sort of out before. The names are, I haven't seen the, the names are. No, I, I, it, I, I think it's just around the edges. Uh, yes, ma'am. Robert, today, uh, Charlie Cook joins other uh, uh, analysts in uh, forecasting that estimated that the Republicans could gain over 40 seats the minute, uh, the, and very possibly substantially more. Do you see that? 
That's that certainly hedges your bets. <laughs> well, forty. Do you think that's? 40 do you th do you th do you see a political landscape right now where the Republicans? Look, I, I am not going to take business away from from Charlie or Stu or, or others by by making a lot of predictions. Do you do you think you you don't think that isn't going to happen? I, I I think I said a few weeks ago that I thought uh, Democrats would r retain the House and the Senate. I still believe that. Oh, yesterday when the president ad libbed that his critics talk about him like a dog. What was he? What did he mean? I, I have not talked to him about that, but I, I assume that uh, if you look at some of what uh, what is said about the president uh, uh, and match them up against the facts, uh, uh, on occasion dogs get a better uh, representation. Who was the they that he was referring to? Oh, I I, I think there's probably I, mean, I we could probably find you several hundred thousand quotes. Robert, I was looking forward to the UN General Assembly meeting in a couple of weeks, and I was re refreshing my memory on what the president said last year. One of the things he said to the assembly is that he was one of his goals was to reduce the skepticism and distrust of the U.S. abroad. Have you? What do you think? Have you talked about this with him lately? Does he think that that has begun uh, to you happen? You know, I, I have. Uh, I have not. I can certainly uh, see if uh, if some of the national security folks have. Look, I think that. Uh, I think the if you look at where um, the the views of those across the world uh, have of uh, of this country uh, now and how they thought of it when the president came into office, I think uh, I think we have seen uh, an improvement in uh, in in world opinion. And but I, I think what's important is that. The removal of skepticism and distrust in the in, in world opinion is not a, a means or an ends to itself. It's a, uh, I'm sorry, it's not an end. It's a means, and that is, uh, we. Uh, it, it, it helps our ability to bring along uh, those on a world stage to do uh, to do things that are important to increase the security of people throughout the world. Uh, I think if you look, this certainly, this, this action predates what the president said last September, but uh, starting with uh, North Korean sanctions, extending to uh, sanctions on Iran. Uh, I think there are a whole host of things, uh, a start, uh, an additional START treaty pending before the Senate to cut uh, the threat of, uh, of nuclear weapons in this age. All are uh, a result of better relationships that we have with uh, with other countries. And can you look for, looking forward to the meeting coming up? To, is there any particular focus that you could highlight, or some something um, the president? You know, has I have uh, not spent a lot of time uh, on what the program looks like yet. But uh, as we get closer, we'll get a chance. Robert, Glenn? Robert the, the president was not born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He had a lot of economic struggle when he was a kid. Why doesn't he uh, talk about that more when he's out? Uh, well, I think he talked a little bit about it yesterday. I think he'll talk about it a little bit more on Wednesday. Uh, it obviously was, uh, was, uh, was part of what he's talked about for, uh, for many years. If I, I, I have not looked back at all his speeches about whether or not that's uh, that's been a lot of what he talked about or, or how much that has changed. I think a lot of his uh, speeches have tended to walk people through their, uh, what likely what they're experiencing in their lives, uh, vice what has happened in his. But that, that's an interesting <laughs> distinction because presidents have been pretty successful at making these, these arguments before looking at President Clinton, even President, uh, second President Bush to some degree have sort of talked about their personal experience. It's been a way of sort of uh, making those points. Do you think he needs to do a good deal more of that? Well, look, I, I, uh, I, as I said, I, I think you'll hear some of that tomorrow. I think you heard some of it uh, yesterday. Um, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's a, a, a good part of uh, what the type of decisions and the type of values that lead to the decisions that he makes uh, as part of our, our economic recovery. So I, I do anticipate you'll hear more of April. Robert, following up on Jake, uh, his question about Borisov, 
Was Peter Orzov someone here who was known as a dissenting voice somewhat to, that would give pushback on proposals periodically? Or was he someone who just pretty much uh, followed through on giving the president ideas or, or implementing <coughs> things that the president wanted? What was he? Or was he a mixture of both? Well, I, 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 April, I, don't, I, don't, I don't wouldn't want to generalize about anybody here. I mean, look, I, I, I think I think probably like uh, uh, like a number of people that work here, and if you walked into any meeting, uh, people have uh, opinions that may or may not vary with those uh, that are in the room. I, 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 it's a this is a longer way of saying I, I I think it'd be hard to put just anybody in a box for uh, for two years of service in 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 one neat box. So so Would you quickly. Would say that he did maybe push back on some economic issues, maybe give other uh, ideas a twist and turns? Because, I mean, he made, uh, he made a persuasive argument in this, in this uh, story that he wrote about, about two, a nation of two deficits and how to come out of that. So, and, I mean, you were saying about Congress, you know, he was trying to make the point about Congress, but he made a persuasive argument bringing facts to what he said. So. Did he bring something to the table along this line? Were people talking about that this morning? You know that he brought that to the table to the president prior to. I, I, maybe I'm just I'm, maybe I'm just not sort of hearing your question. I, look, I, I mean I think uh, I I think Peter has again depending on the issue, depending on uh, has had had varying opinions on what to do when and. Uh, and how best to execute it. And I think that's true for a whole host of different policies. And also on uh, the issue of Cleveland, there's some in Cleveland, in actually the city proper of Cleveland, who are concerned saying that Cleveland is a prime example of a city who could benefit from any kind of stimulus package. And the president continues to go uh, on the outskirts of Cleveland. They're saying that the city uh, has a 20% unemployment rate, 17,000 vacant homes, and Wednesday the president goes to a place called Palma on the outskirts. And before he's gone to, uh, if I'm getting right, uh, Stonysville or something like that, before on the outskirts of Cleveland, and why not go into Cleveland proper? You know, April, I don't, I don't know that. Uh, look, I, I just don't. Uh, I don't think that. What you talk about in Palmer doesn't also mean, uh, look, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this. Look, I, I, I think if the, what the president is talking about is companies that are in Cleveland proper or around Cleveland, uh, these tax cuts would help them. Uh, infrastructure spending, uh, building new roads and bridges is, uh, and runways is going to help it's going to is going to help everybody. This isn't uh, th this isn't a suburban economic speech or an urban economic speech, uh, because I, I just don't think that the president and the teams have have. I don't think they've dissect, dissected this uh, quite down to that level uh, in in terms of uh, uh, of the types of things that we need and the types of problems that we face. Okay. Robert, just That's two right. just two <laughs> questions. Uh, the uh, Wash, uh, two Washington Post editorials were headlined The Scourge of Rape in Prisons and a Tolerance of Rape. And they asked, why has the Justice Department dithered for a year? And could you tell us, because the President does care about this, doesn't he? Uh, I, uh, I didn't uh, necessarily read what you're referring to, Lester. And two I, editorials in the uh, Washington Post, and I have them right here. Well, I. Uh, I <laughs> I, you should, if, if they reference the Department of Justice, I think that's probably a pretty good place to start. Then uh, you, don't, you don't believe that any of us would talk about you like a dog, <coughs> do you? Can I get back to you on that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm simply, I'm going through the same sort of tortured soul that I can only imagine Hans was going through in, in, asking, uh, in asking his questions. <laughs> uh, BP is going to re release its report tomorrow into the causes of the oil spill. Um, has the White House had an advanced look at this? And secondly, given the past relationship between the administration and the company, what uh, level of confidence do you have that this is going to produce a genuine uh, finding into what caused the accident? Well, um, look, I I'll say this. Uh, I I know of no one that has seen it here. I've certainly seen uh, emails I alluding to the notion that 
uh, and clips alluding to the notion that this is this will be released. Uh, obviously, I think we'd want a chance to look at the report. Um, the I think a, an important part of that investigation, Stephen, ultimately is going to get is going to be a look at the blowout preventer itself, which only recently, uh, in, in the last few days, has been brought to the surface, and will give us um, a chance to see whether was this uh, was this a design flaw? Was this something that was uh, was just uh, a problem that that this blowout preventer had to deal with, uh, and a whole host of things. So we'll certainly look through the report, obviously, um, uh, look through the report and and, uh, and and may have some comment about it. But I, have, I, I, I do not know of anybody who has uh, seen an advanced copy. Yes, sir. Thank you, Robert. Um, about uh, Secretary General Rasmussen's visit, is the president worried with NATO and actually diminishing role in Afghanistan? Uh, this becoming a heavier burden on U.S. soldiers on the ground. And secondly, has General Petraeus expressed or requested more NATO involvement in Afghanistan? I don't know about the second part. In, in, uh, uh, look, I, as part of what the President announced last December at West Point, uh, NATO contributed an increase in, uh, in forces on the ground in Afghanistan. Uh, contribution that uh, that I know commanders at the time at ISAF uh, believed would play a crucial role in our overall strategy. Um, obviously, this is not the problems that we face with uh, in Afghanistan uh, and in Pakistan dealing with uh, Al Qaeda and its extremist allies, their potential return, an environment that, uh, that allows if they were to return uh, unfettered planning uh, for an additional terrorist attack, that's not something that's simply in the interest of the United States in preventing. It's uh, it's of it's of international concern, and that's that's why there is international there's an international security uh, assistance force there, and uh, uh, and we're certainly uh, I know that the commanders our commanders are thankful for that involvement. But does the president feel that the NATO leaders are not conscious enough of the general uh, danger for themselves of a so. of a of a terrorist? Uh, oh no! I, I look. I look. I, I think if you look at um, if you look, I, I certainly wouldn't say that. I think if you look at what has happened over the past couple of years in the place in places past few years, not just a couple, but past few years. In places like England and Spain, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that uh, I don't think you could make a very eloquent uh, point that uh, there aren't those in the NATO alliance that uh, that haven't also experienced the type of uh, uh, the type of uh, terrorism. Uh, certainly, maybe not quite on the scale of 9/11, but certainly they've hardly been immune to it. Sam. Robert, just to uh, follow up. Robert, yes, uh, there's been growing alarm in the judicial community about the vacancies in some of these uh, federal courts. Uh, 47 vacancies have been labeled emergencies by the judiciary because of heavy caseloads. You've talked a lot from the lectern about GOP obstructionism on this front, but what is the White House going to do differently, either with the remaining time in the recess, perhaps, or afterwards to actually get people appointed and into office? Well, Tim, I don't, I don't have the statistics in front of me. I think obviously we have uh, sent up a comparable number of, uh, of judicial appointments um, uh, up to the Senate, as you mentioned, and as uh, as I have mentioned on many occasions, uh, we have seen um, a lack of uh, any sort of cooperation in in moving a number of these nominees along, and and look, every. President and Congress of differing uh, parties is going to have some fights about this, but there are there continue to be uh, an absurd number of judges that have passed. And again, I don't have the stats in front of me, but we'll get them uh, that have passed unanimously out of committee uh, that that need to be uh, considered quickly by Congress. It just doesn't make a lot of sense if there's. Uh, that we can't move a judicial nominee through the process uh, if they have received uh, 
a unanimous endorsement from the committee that is most tasked with uh, looking at these uh, looking at these judicial Just appointments. Like recess, though, and there hasn't been a recess appointment, as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I know, of any of these uh, nominees. I'm wondering if you, we should expect something in the week ahead, or, or why haven't you taken advantage of the recess appointment? I, I look. I I don't have any. Uh, to, I can't look into my crystal ball, but I'll tell you what's uh, what's uh, ahead. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, on uh, economic strategy. Go ahead. Um, someone is, Brookings Institution um, senior fellow, William Gale, about a month ago said that whether you can afford it or not, the only politically feasible thing to do is to have at least a one or two year extension of 2001-2003 tax cuts. Now, can you afford not to do that? You hope to address long-term business uncertainty, which I believe is what you're trying to do with your 100% well, writing. I mean, your uh, look, so, so some things are designed to address, as I said earlier, uh, money that may be on the sidelines that isn't being used for uh, investment, for research, or for expansion. Um, uh, but uh, look I, again, I, I don't. I don't think that anybody at the Brookings Institute would tell you from an economic standpoint that the best way to address business uncertainty is by extending a tax cut for somebody that makes a million dollars a year. You didn't say that. You said if you want to get anything through politically feasibly, <coughs> the only way politically feasibly getting anything through would be to do it in order to get what you want to get through, well, again, which is business uh, that's, uncertainty. Uh, uh, maybe business I agree uncertainty. some with what uh, I, I I said I thought that's what the argument that Peter was actually trying to make in the newspaper today was, again, a, a, a political and a congressional relations argument, uh, not an economic argument. I'm sorry, but at um, his swan song, um, Orzov did say you can't afford a 10-year extension of all the 2001-2003 tax cuts, because that would cost $700 billion. That $700 billion is a 10-year extension of the upper end tax cuts, not the 2001-2003 middle class tax cuts. Thank you. Thank you guys.